there's a law enforcement from city police to the uh, to the, uh, de uh, deputy sheriffs, which is a county um, order order, and uh, many more throughout the nation that are trying to come together to influence individuals of color to get involved in law enforcement and also know where they stand uh, constitutionally with law enforcement. Okay, so, and that's the shades of blue. Shades yeah. of blue. Yeah, I was listening in. It was amazing. <laughs> yes. It, it was. It was it was a great show, you guys. It was it was amazing. I, I enjoyed it. Uh tell me this. Did y'all miss me? Yes, we know you were busy. <laughs> it was a good busy. It was a good busy. You see, you like the way I played that, like Carlos Santana coming in. You hear that? Yes. Ah. I had to do it just a little bit. It's, at first, I didn't know how it was going to be. I was like, eh, let's see. But finally here, so I'm excited about it. And it's fun. And it takes me all the way back. The reminder. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I forgot about all of that. So what's new, people? Oh, nothing. Just monitoring these people taking this vaccine. Because like I said, uh, and we ain't trying to play Night of the Living Dead, the zombie. Nah, I, so I'm just, I'm just waiting to see what's what with that vaccine. Now tell me, now I heard this. I didn't see it. Y'all know I'm a reader, but I didn't even have time to go look and read it. But I heard that they did. Someone took the vaccine and she took it. Uh, she was one of the first ones to take it. And then after she had taken it, she stood up for the interview and passed out. Oh, Lord. See, did you yeah. did you see that? No, I missed that one. That's caution, cautionary. I, I'm gonna get the information. I'm gonna get the information, <laughs> and then put that <laughs> you know put that out there. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start with you, Rubo. The vaccine. Some people said that said they weren't gonna take it. I mean, they were adamant, like I'm not taking that vaccination. Now they're taking it. What's your thoughts? I just. I mean, the first thing is, uh, I hope that God, it, it, it's effective, first of all. And I hope that there's no side effects that causes any ill situation for anybody. Because, I mean, look who's getting it. They're giving, I mean, they're giving it all our healthcare workers, you know, first. So it better work. You know what right. I mean? Or and that, that's my thought. I'm like, why would you give it to the healthcare workers first and those ones to help people? Well, right. the, I heard this one article where, where there was a guy who if said it, that they... Listen, if it don't go right, then we all did. Then who gonna help you? We calling you. Y'all got enough knowledge. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think by the time just going off of, like, who may be the most affected and all that kind of stuff, I think by the time it gets to some demographics as far as age and health and that kind of stuff, that it probably is going to be a while before a lot of people would have access to it, especially with Trump not buying the uh, extra hundred million uh, shots from Pfizer. You know, they have a new company out, and uh, it's it's two names I can't think of it all. Astrogenica. There you go. See, look at you. Or is that the two the million syllables? <laughs> there should be two. <laughs> should be two companies. Yeah, it should be. Should be the um. They were, I heard that there were some elderly people, like for nursing homes, that they were talking about getting it, giving it to at the beginning on the first day. I want to say, what was that, 12, 15 or 14? I can, my, all my days from everything that's going on, all my days is like coming together as one. Um, but there was an elderly lady and some people were upset because she was, what, like 92 years old? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and they felt that she shouldn't have gotten it. Why? And listen, you got to have some statistics. I appreciate her getting it. Yeah. Well, what do you mean you got to have some statistics? <laughs> you need the statistics. Is this good for the elderly? If somebody want to volunteer, you want to be 100 years old and try it, fine by me. Let me yeah. know. Okay, it's safer. You know what I'm saying? But, because you're, int you're introducing a foreign body. Yeah. So, but, but you know, go ahead. I, I just kind of feel like that's that argument about well, what's that person's quality of life just because they're age, right? No, well, you know, you can, you know, but that is, I, not, that is not why I'm saying that. No, I ain't saying you saying that, but I'm saying why would anybody question her getting it if it wasn't not for it? If she was, if she was 72, would they be saying the same thing? 
right? And she could, she could have been very healthy too. But think about, here's the thing for stats. This is my point for the stats. Uh, when you do it, it's like, okay, well, we know it, it's effective. We have, you know how it is. If one person died, that's why they put it down there. It's about side effect, death. You'd be like, mm -hmm. never mind, but it might be just one person. So any symptom that any individual gets is considered a side effect. So using an elderly person, it's like, okay, well, it might be safe. Um, you have, like you said, uh, you said Pence and his wife had done it, you know, had taken it. But remember, what was it? Um, Bush, President Bush, President Obama and President Clinton that said they were going to go ahead and take it. I wonder, did they do it? They said they would be the first ones. I don't I know. If they haven't yeah. heard anything. Yeah. Right. I think I, I think when they when they when they did it, it would have been world known. Exactly. You know what I, mean? I don't think it would have been. Maybe they sitting like me with the elder. They like, okay, y'all got it. Oh yeah, I got it. Maybe they got to wait <laughs> because they they're not, wait. because you know, because they ain't, you know, they may not fall in those demographics, you know. Now, Clinton might be on the other hand, because he didn't he have heart problems and stuff like that, but, he, um, he, he you know, problems. but. Or maybe they waiting on Trump to take it. Right. He is not even wearing a mask. He is not trying to take it. He like, I'm good. Y'all good. Bye. Yeah. So I don't see, I don't see Trump taking it. If he takes it. And you know everybody want to see. He should have been the first one. He really should have. Well, you know. Now, one of the listening audience said that um they obviously have you know televised it where they did a fake one. They they were acting like they gave it to a man and they didn't. Well, I don't know about all that, but I, I know like in England or the UK, I should probably say that when the first person they got over there was an older lady. I. I I want to say she was like 84, maybe. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? And I, I wasn't the first person here, uh, African American nurse. That's the one they said that they that interviewed passed out. and passed out when she got the in <laughs> she got the injection, uh -huh. and then she went to be interviewed and passed out. Maybe it was the excitement. Maybe she got up too quickly. I'll Listen check. here. That was enough to say no. Nope, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I just read an article on uh, CNN there talking about um, how uh, Dr. Fauci is trying to get people, is trying to, uh, well, he's letting people know that one of the top scientists that helped develop the vaccination is a uh, African-American doctor, fe okay. female African-American doctor. But did you see the last name? Uh, I need to pronounce the last name. It? It's Coburn. not Johnson, her last name. And Go ahead. It's Kizzy Colbert. Exactly. I think her name. Exactly. I know black people named Colbert. <laughs> no, it's it's like it's a whole Come different on name. Now. We it's went to school whole, with somebody I, with that name. If if it was a black scientist and her last name was Jackson, I'd be like, okay, all right. She if it was Jackson, if the most Jackson, generic of all black it names. Jones, if it was Johnson. <laughs> if it Jenkins, was one of them, if it was I'm Jenkins, like, okay, huh? I can't even pronounce that last name. I'm like, no, you from overall, you from somewhere else. No. So, so, so the more stereotypical the name, the, yes. the more you would have did it. Or, or, I still well, wouldn't have know. done it. I, I'm still not doing it. I'd be like, well, how much they pay? I'm not doing it. No, mm, sorry. Mm. Not at all. Like I well, said, in a couple of years, we turn around and have a bunch of zombies. Uh, no, thank you. I'm good. Well, they were saying prior to this, the only vaccination that was made quicker, <clears> I believe, was the uh, measles. Um, uh, yeah. vaccination. It was made, but it, it took four years. Okay. Versus this here one is going to months. All I mean, right. Here, here you are. I have it. The nurse that fainted, she, she was in Tennessee. Uh huh. She fainted. Let me see. Nurse who fainted after vaccine, they say she has a condition that caused her to pass out. Y'all ready for the condition? What? Pain. Who's got to pain after a shot? <laughs> Stop. Hey, but that, that's like that's like when somebody gets shot and they said they died of a heart attack or, or you know to be like well maybe so that was their excuse you no know, that's that's hilarious pain pain that was their excuse listen pain. Uh, a nurse who was one of the first healthcare workers to be vaccinated for COVID nineteen in Chattanooga Tennessee on Thursday I don't I don't I told you all my days was all mm -hmm. going nuts all together passed out on live TV. Yeah, you guys look it up. And they said that she had a condition. The nurse with a pain condition faints. 
pain condition. We all got a pain condition. If you <laughs> inject something, a sh- give me a shot. I'm going to have a pain, in- pain, a pain condition. condition. Right. I don't like taking Ooh. shots neither. So no. The nurse passed out on live TV. So forget the Johnson Jackson hair's last name. See? Don't even worry about the last name now. I just see this woman on here. She done passed out. No. Because I, she has a condition mm, of pain. No. Ah. I guess Jimmy Carter is supposed to be take uh, gonna be taking it. God bless Jimmy Carter. That guy, he's just he just had a Jimmy brain Carter. tumor or something. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So if you had a pre-existing illness and you figure, okay, well, I don't have anything, I don't want. I don't, I don't have anything else to lose. Let me go ahead and take it. Would you? What you mean? I, I got so crazy. What? What? I got you know what? I mean, like what? What? I got my blood pressure a little high. I ain't got nothing to lose. I mean, what, <laughs> what you saying? Girl, like, you ain't got nothing. Like, to like, lose. like, like I ate too many uh, pound cakes. I got a few pounds. I got to weigh. I'm, I'm technically obese. I, 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 I ain't <laughs> got nothing to lose. M&Ms and the candy Come on. on the table. Come on, man. I don't. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, it'll be, I have to see what's going on. At, maybe after a year, if this thing, if I see people doing better and it, but mm, right now, mm, but I have noticed a lot of people that was against it at first. Now, all of a sudden they're ready to take it. I guess everybody is tired of this way of living and want to get back to normal. Some, some type of normalcy, which I understand. So they figure I'll try it. They're gamblers. Risky people. But I ain't nobody guinea pig, and I don't even like guinea pigs. I ain't even about to start. I'm not trying it. I'm no thank you. Give me about a year. Let me check everybody out first, and then I might. Well, what I think it will probably be about that amount of time before a lot of people will probably be able to get it anyway. I'm thinking. Right. I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, I forget where the site was. I wasn't, wasn't prepared to talk about this, but it was a site where it talked about the countries and who had what level of vaccines and then who had what orders in for future vaccine. You know what I mean? And we were, we weren't up there, you know, we were like, we, you know, and to have the, the, the most people that we have, I mean, outside of like China, India, and you know, those uh, humongous populated countries, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a lot to go, a lot to go around. Not to mention if, you know, just how you get a store. You know, they're like, it has to be at sub-zero temperatures and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's going to be a process. Then you got to take three, sh- I mean, two shots too. Oh, uh, like shots. Well, oh. for the one, for what was okay. it? Uh, I, I think it's the Pfizer one, right? It's just, it's just it's one. Two. It's two. No, it's just one. But that other name that they just came out with, there's two a month later. So it's almost like a Hep B series. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's almost like a Hep B series, and you'll be able to actually, you know, take it twice. Now, most of us might have the same reaction, side effect, passing out fainting because we got a disorder of pain. You shoot me once, boom, okay. Now I got to go back volunteer, voluntarily and get another one in 30 days. Mm. But you know, but Some of the per- listening <laughs> audience said that they uh, that they're willing, they're going to take, take it. it. Yeah, I saw that. I, but you know, for that for that nurse, I'm just kind of cracking up because I'm just thinking like, um, if you that sensitive to pain, why would you volunteer? <laughs> be the first I mean not 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 necessarily the first person to take the vaccine but why would you be doing anything that involves pain <laughs> if you know you got a tendency to fall out of the flow I'm just I just didn't under- <laughs> yeah that that one didn't that's, make any sense that, I guess a- Obama's supposed to be doing his live when he goes to take his he's gonna do it live okay right. okay and that's all right do it live but is it to convince us that it's safe for us yeah and to me even when they were doing the when they were trying to do the um when they was experimenting and remember the articles we talked about that where they were like uh, we need more african-american when they did the trials the trials yeah and it's like why you why why are you trying to push this so hard on us i almost feel <laughs> like i'm being like why off. well i think the the issue from what they were explaining was because um, they didn't have, yeah, you, ha- you have to know there may be an adverse effect in a certain population or whatever. So 
you want to see what the effective rate is of that of of a, of it with that the effective rate is if you have pain you will pass out on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough for me and i'm just like no i'm not doing it and i'm gonna tell you my philosophy this is just me just me okay you like you you like okay i'm ready get it i want people to go ahead and get it because more people that get it the more people to get it less chances you know we can kind of control this situation you don't need yeah. a nail to just come out of it like what yeah. so i don't even have to worry about it but let's so, not, to the listening audience let me put this out here uh you can follow me on all social sites all the shop talk with mel i got a youtube channel twitter instagram facebook everywhere just google shop talk with mel and you will be able to find me and you'll be able to listen to different shows later on go ahead I, had to put no, that I was, 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 was going to say something, but I, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> no, say it. Say it. We want to know. The no, people want to know. Your, your approach to this is kind of, it, it, it just took me back to my days of doing like uh, so, uh, sex education. And, and, I, and I used to always, it used to always like, bought, like one thing we were trying to do is to um, uh, really have women take control of the, of the sexual activity as far as like, hey, if you're sexually active, have condoms and stuff like that right oh how to and, work be proactive okay yeah you know don't you know don't rely on this condom this guy probably had in his wallet for the last six months and, <laughs> and like like your approach is like that a little bit when it comes to the coronavirus you like well as long as everybody else got it if i if I, i'm presuming that everyone else has it, you know what i mean so uh, you know uh yeah I don't have to worry about it. Look, you ain't got to worry about me. Sometimes you got to bring your own protection. You got to bring your own protection. Nah, I just, y'all got it. Y'all y'all go ahead. You be responsible. <laughs> Let me be irresponsible by myself if that's what we're going to do. But I'm not taking the vaccine, okay? And then, listen, they offered it to us, though. Mm -hmm. They had us in a group tech. Well, well, let me ask you this, though. Go ahead. I remember a few years ago, there were, I, I believe it was a hospital they said that everybody had to get the flu vaccine. We still do. At the house. And then if you didn't get it, it was almost what terms for a ter termination, right? Yeah, it's an ultimatum. So what happens when that becomes an issue for people in the healthcare field who have the that particular stance? Who had okay, now I'm getting ready to tell you about that. The flu vaccine. When you work in certain areas of nursing. You have to have it. Went into the hospital, yeah, I have to have the flu vaccine. They encourage if you have a chronic care condition, we're talking, we'll do the popular ones. Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, all that. They want you, they encourage you to take the flu, vac the flu vaccine because you are immune compromised. You know, actually. And I always told them no. Okay. Now with me, working in the field, with my type one diabetic self. Look, I need to check this while we do it. Look, while we do it live anyway. All right, here you go. I'm gonna let y'all see it. Look, Lord, <laughs> three, damn. Yeah, I know it's 3.34 right now. You, you let's, eat something though. I'm drinking water. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you had a biscuit or something. You mine was like something. always like that. Mine was like, if it was okay, wait, 120. Let me, stay focused. let me stay focused. So on that, with the chronic care and the flu, uh, vaccine, they encourage you to take it. If you are a worker, yes, it's a, it's an ultimatum. It's pretty much like if you don't take the flu vaccine and you're in the medical field, you cannot work certain places because they don't want you to potentially be have it and be a carrier and give it to the sickly patients or clients wherever you work at. Now, I said when I was in the hospital, what was that, last week? Yeah. If they do, and I spoke to some other nurses, if they do require us to take it like they had us um, do with the flu vaccine, male will not be working in certain fields. I'll, I'll teach. I'll teach. And see, even like when you are in school, like nursing school, to go in during clinicals, they have to have the flu vaccine. You have to have it before you go in. But I teach or I talk. I got a platform. I'll teach you this mm -hmm. way. You know what I mean? I'm not taking it. And I did feel some type of way. But let me tell you, you also, this is your get out. Look, this is your get out. I, I need some theme music. Ding, 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 ding. That's what, <laughs> to let you know. Uh, this is, matter of fact, 
Let me oblige you, lovely people. This is your get out. <laughs> your get out is the same as if you, um, like children that don't get vaccinated before they start school and everyone is supposed to be vaccinated. Religious beliefs against your religious beliefs. That's your get out. Okay. And I know that's right. One of the listeners, Chrissy said, she was like, I just continue washing my hands and keeping my mask on. I feel you. I feel you because that's what, what you gonna do. Right. What, what you gonna do? And where do, where do we go if we don't? Go ahead, Rugo. What's your thought? No, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because you, you know, you look at that and you say, well, let's say if they say, well, we, we going to tend to terminate versus, you know, whatever your results are, whatever you choose, if you choose not to, right? Let's just say. So what happens when you have to, because I, I, it was one, it was on NPR, I was listening to this one doctor, it was in Texas, he was saying that he was definitely going to take it, but he said about, he got like pushback from about like 40% of his nurses that they weren't. So let's say, hypothetically, that they had to release the, the 40% of his nursing staff. How do you function? You lose your money. How do you, and yeah, how do you, fun- like, yeah. how do you, well, not, I mean, well, I mean, you lose money, but you also lose lives and you, lose, you know, cause there's people, the whole issue about the social ball. distancing was yeah. about not to put the pressure on the healthcare system because we're dealing with this thing, but we still have, you know, uh, stitches we got to do, um, how, you know, you know, emergency stuff that still happens, you know, that's why you got to stay at home. It wasn't so much, I mean, it's like, don't catch it, but also like, don't do anything that's going to cause you to be in an emergency room. Let, let, me, say, let me say this, I'm, and I'm going to finish, let me finish this first. We had a group text. I got it like mm, three days ago. Okay. Whenever I was coming back to this area, that particular day, the group text comes and we're sitting there and I'm talking and then they offered it for everybody because of the field that we're in. They said, well, since you work in this field, they're offering it for you next week, which is Monday. Who all wants the vaccine? So, you know, we know who our coworkers are and who we work with, right? Hilarious. Group text. <laughs> in there. Do you want to let me know if you want the vaccination? No, 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 no. You already know who the no's are, right? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. It was a probably, probably about like 20 of us in there. Then you had a few yeses. It was like, oh, okay. Then it was one that she said no, but I'm gonna let y'all guess. I ain't gonna say her name to protect the innocent. So the our boss actually ask that person again do you want it or not guess what she put i said no and <laughs> <laughs> i was cracking up i was like you should have just put a column look do stats on that yay nay who wants it and who does not want it now if this is gonna happen next week now if y'all see me cleaning up and y'all see me out with my mask and everything on shopping extra doing overtime that's because they got sick so, and I'm cleaning up and I'm going to get my money. You go call, yep, I'll be right there. They got that dog on vaccination. There you go. Now, it did, COVID did run rampant in there where somebody came in there sick and they knew they had it. Knew that they had it and they came to work anyway. Now, just what Rugo was saying as far as regarding like at 40% of the people decide, I don't want it. How, how does your facility run when you have a shortage. The other place, um, the DON, she had COVID. And on one side, they had, they called it the COVID section. So the people that were positive for COVID was over there. She had no nurses because it was so many people that was getting COVID. DON, when you're in management, we know all my people that's been in management, you, if your staff does not come to work, guess what? You are going to work, mm. okay? She had COVID. They told her, they was like, well, you got it and they got it. So you'll be fine. Now I understood, right. I understood the concept, but that's if you're asymptomatic. This girl had a fever. Now, now I understand and I feel, I was like, what? And she was there because I'm on the other side, right? And she was like, I'm so sick. Yeah, sorry for your luck to myself. That's me. 
because she's my boss. And she's like, and they told me this. Well, I felt bad for her, but guess what I said? I'm not taking on a hundred patients. Mm -hmm. It was like 60 something. Cause I'm on another, I'm on way on another unit. I'm not going to take your keys and take, go over that, you know, go over to that side too. And then if something happens, I'll be responsible and be held liable. But that's why I always tell people that is a job. If something happened to you, I share with you guys, the one place I worked at where the lady died and they had, they wanted to post her job that same day, that weekend. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Here again, you have to know your value and you have to say, I mean more. And right now, let's be honest, the ball, the ball is in our court. All of us with this whole COVID, the ball is in our court. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Are you going to go ahead? Okay, well, we're going to take this vaccine. I need to do this. Um, I need to come to work. And the young lady that came to work to get everybody sick at the one place and she can't know when she was sick. I, how irresponsible was that? Especially, very. especially being a nurse. That was, that was very irresponsible. And to me, careless, because now you got everybody sick. Took out five she people. Knew she, she knew she was sick or she knew she, she had COVID? She knew she had COVID. That means you're sick. That she means you should have sat had. your tail down somewhere okay. for 10 right. days. And she and she came to work anyway. Packing and coffee. A lot of these places are doing that, though. They are still allowing some of them, not everything, where allowing people just to where come to at. work. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. When you are a nurse, we have a duty. And not even a nurse, period. Just as a person, as a human. As human beings, we have a duty to protect others and ourselves. You know, and you would hope and pray that others will protect you like i don't want to if i know i got chicken pox i'm not gonna go and be like oh, okay well i just wear long sleeves but i'm gonna sit there and be like what's up this stop i'm gonna sit there and have a an entire conversation and listen i didn't realize that i had that many droplets until i had the shield on speaking of that you know mm -hmm. you, you talk to people all the time and it's like okay right. oh the masks are effective because i had the shield on and i'm thinking i'm cute Baby, listen, by the end of the day, when I took that, I was like, what is all that on there? I up here spit. I was like, I don't be spitting during the conversation. That's pretty dry. <laughs> Look like I had to clean this thing off. And this is me. There's looking little droplets on there. I'm looking like, I was like, oh, that's crazy. I thought I was cute and spitting, spraying people. <laughs> but I got a shield to help people. You know what I mean? So please wear your mask. And if you decide not to wear it, that don't come by me Listen. don't expose me and that nurse she should not have come to work because here's mm -hmm. the thing she's not she was looking at her pockets clearly like i need my money i'm gonna go to work i'm not really you know i don't have a fever the whole nine and it's like okay you worried about you paying your bills but now you got everybody else sick who can't pay theirs and it, it affects people differently i wasn't okay with that and like I said, she took out five. So everybody had to get, once I got tested, I called back. I knew where I was at because I'm not playing. People like uh, the list, one of the listeners said that um, people are shopping like what? Because they they're tired of being in the house. That's not, that is so irresponsible. Yeah. But she took out five nurses. Now, this is a small place. You take out five nurses because you didn't want to stay at home. So now everybody got to stay at home and can't pay they, their bills because of your selfishness. Does she listen to the show? I don't care. I hope she's listening. I, that's all I was going to say. I hope you, you know, listen. But, but here's the thing. She didn't even have to listen to the show because I said it to her. That was yeah. very rude. But, but that I think this whole thing speaks because I have a story like that too. And I think it speaks to the to the issue of why like you, this is one of those situations you really can't trust. Not that people, I mean, not, I, I, I can't say that person was ill. I, I don't know. What, what I'm trying to say is that can't, you can't yeah. trust that everybody else is, is doing what you would do, right? So that's why you got to take those, like, those precautions. Like if there was a person who I, who I know, and this is a third hand story, you know, so uh -huh. I won't, I won't say what, who it is. But basically, this person went on Facebook, said they had COVID to the world, right? Okay. And five days later, they out at a restaurant eating, you know? 
<laughs> so that's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Now the thing is, what I don't know is the timeline. Of, I know they had it when they said the announcement, but I don't know the timeline of when they quarantined and if they even did all that stuff. But the point is, is that you got this person on here talking about how terrible it is, but then turns around five days later and then goes into a public place. And then not not like, hey, I got to go to the grocery store because I didn't have nothing or I got to go pay this electric bill because they'll cut me off or something like that. But I'm going to a restaurant, a sit down, I'm going to a restaurant and sitting down and eating my meal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you got to, you know, don't don't think that everybody is doing what they should do, even when, you know, so I, I thought it was. I thought it was the most disgusting thing I ever heard in, in recent in recent days anyway with everything going on. But like you're saying, just that sense of like it's about me and, I, and nobody else. Very right. selfish. People are still fighting about wearing a mask. I was in uh, Walmart one day last week and some girl was in there just to shop and everybody else in there with their mask on. A couple of them had hanging on their ear, not even on their mouth. And I'm looking like they crazy, especially the one that I used to see in the bar all the time. But the one girl didn't have a mask on at all. If you'd have seen the dirty looks that I was giving her, I kept walking about an hour looking at her. And she sure was looking at her, making sure she saw me. She didn't care. She was walking around. Everybody had their mask on looking at her. She walking around like, oh, well, I, I was waiting on her to say something because I was going to light her up. But how do, are people still, these stores are posting that the mask is required how are people still walking in shopping without a mask? I don't think I don't think they're walking in without one. I think they're taking it off when they're in there. That's what's that's what's happening. Because I've seen a, actually just yesterday I happened to be in Wally World and um, we were walking and it was this man and I, I'm gonna assume man and wife and um, they both had on masks. He had his down, but he was on he, and he was on a cell phone. And she had hers down. You know what I mean? So they're walking in there doing what they got to do. Then they're making like really dumb decisions when they're in the store. You know, uh, unfortunately, they, you know what they should do. Remember back in the day when they used to have secret shoppers come up? Oh, I, I just saw you put that in your pocket. They would confront <laughs> people on the spot. Remember that? Right. They ain't wait for you to go outside. As soon as you did something that looked like you was concealing it, it was on your ass, right? And they got to need, they need to take that same, And I mean, that same approach too you know what i mean because if it though none of those corporations want their place of business to be the epicenter for a breakout none of them well absolutely not and then they lost so much money when we were on lockdown so they like okay well i need your money well i i would say certain retailers you know what i mean but uh -huh. not the big box i mean not uh, not big box not those uh you know those uh I saw a video. all inclusive stores, I guess. No, okay. Um, one of the listening audience members actually said that um, one of our listeners said that um, not everybody believes in that. And it's a lot of people that don't believe in it. And it's not a black or white thing because, right. you but know, the, they just don't well, believe. Go, go ahead, Rugal. I know. No, no. I, I mean, that, and, that, and that's true. You know what I mean? That's true. But I mean, let's look at COVID like religion. You may not believe, but you don't have to offend me for believing. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and, and then sometimes you just do the you just do the rules because it's even if you don't believe, there's still a there's still a level. I mean, first of all, there's our our governor kind of made a wishy washy mandate that you wear one. You know, um, Biden is saying that he would say in the first hundred days he's going to insist that you wear one. You know, I don't want, but but it's just. How bad could it be if we're just telling you to wear one for that particular moment in time when you're with other people? Do what you want to do in your house. Do what you want to do with your friends that want you to do that stuff. But we're saying when you're in a public place, just like if you go into McDonald's, if somebody walked into any restaurant, I ain't going to even say them, if you don't have one of your shoes, if you don't have on a shirt, what you get? No service. Oh, right. Right. So right. we, we all agree, even though some people are nudists and they want to run around on beaches naked and stuff like that. They do agree to this one rule that when I go into this restaurant, I'm going to wear some shoes, I'm going to wear a shirt, right? right. And we ain't got to tell you not to wear pants because you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point is, is, look at it from that perspective. Only when you involve with other people should you, should you do it. Ain't nobody telling you to do it any other time, you know? 
Just and and it's, not, it's not asking a lot. Now, I will say this. Now, uh, you do have those who have had COVID, and they're like, well, I had it already, so I'm good. No, you ain't. Go ahead. <laughs> But isn't they like, well, I'm good. I'll need a mask. I had but, it already. But then the then the argument becomes they they truly don't know how long like it was I remember early on they were saying that they think people even after they had it could be up to forty five days could still be contagious or something like it was something like that they were they were saying. But but it's this you ain't no one no one told you this was chicken pox. And even with chicken pox you can get shingles. You know what I'm saying? No, no one told you that. No, no. Where are you getting this from? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. so people sitting down and just thinking like, well, it makes sense. I've already had it once because I know a little bit of seventh grade science that, <laughs> that I ain't got. Like, where are you I getting this from? I won the science fair in second grade. Yeah, you, you don't know. I came to second place, but guess what? I'm wearing my mask. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? I'm just saying, you know. But, but you know, that. I mean, that's the, that's the incredible... Uh, uh, lack of knowledge or or deductive reasoning, I would say. You know what I mean? Because that developed, you know, this is this crazy. And and see, here's the thing, too, to piggyback on that is, okay, if you had it and you feel as though that you built antibodies against it, you're still a carrier. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you go to somebody. Yeah, that was, that. yeah, that was, yeah, you're right. So, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, I already had them. I'm not worried about, okay, so wear your mask to protect others. Nobody's yeah. trying to do that. Everybody's just focused on self and being selfish. And I just really believe that the time that we had to lay down, <laughs> that what they call, that, that's what they call it when you in jail. Oh, yeah, you lay down for a couple of years. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think the time that we had to lay down for those months was to look at it and stop being selfish and look at life as a whole and say, okay, what am I doing? It made you reevaluate yourself, do a self uh, personal inventory to say, am I where I want to be? Am I a nice person? We've lost so many different people like this year. Is, and then you look at like, is this where I want to be? You know, yeah. how, how can I make the world a better place? Go ahead. And that was, and we're doing, and, and preparing for my segment today, it actually made me change what I wanted to do. I uh, seen it came across this video where it's talking about the people, the celebrities or people in um, the movie industry that died. And, they, and then some of them, they weren't even saying like, these are COVID related deaths, but they did mention if they knew how that person died, right? And there was some young folk, you know, like 30, 28, 24, something like that. Like it was a few of them that died from COVID, from COVID, um, from COVID related uh, sickness. Well, yeah. Over COVID kills you, you know what I mean? But the point is, is like, you know, the it's, it's, it hit anybody, you know what I mean? It's, you're not, you know, you're not exempt from this, you know? It's not. And it's, it's awful. Matter of fact, speaking of that, did you, I'll tell you guys, I, I don't even care if you read it. I'll tell you, tell it to you again. Um, they're United Airlines. So mm -hmm. to the listening audience, if you, you know, I want you guys to check it out. United Airlines, somebody lied and said that they did not have COVID. Guess what? Two, 200 people, 200 people on the flight. He died. The pilot had to make a, an emergency stop and emergency landing and they said that he had covid so oh. you're saying a guy got on the flight with 200 people had covid was have was experiencing symptoms to the point of being sick enough to die in flight in flight i, I want to say it was from florida to california so how did he even get i thought they would at least check this temperature before he got on the plane he probably didn't have one but if you take tylenol what happens well, yeah. You do have fever. fever. You know what I mean? Fever. It's a fever reducer. Yeah. And it, it was it's just like you just put everybody on that flight at risk and you had symptoms. And yeah. you had symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's what's nuts. Like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know how I would respond. Well, it is, I mean, something you figure he's he had he's probably sneezing and all that other stuff. You know, you well, think they would have well, they had, now they, uh, sorry to interrupt you. 
they did mm -hmm. they do have a questionnaire that they ask you <laughs> Yeah, you remember when Ebola came out? They asked you, "Have you been out the country?" No, no, no. Oh yeah, they, on, on that. To have to do, do what I have to do. Yeah, on that questionnaire, they ask you that. I, I have to take it last a few times in the last few months, and um, it's uh, it asks you, "Have you traveled since October 2019?" I think it was or something like you know. Or well, like they end up finding out that um they end up finding out that he had it because of uh his wife was overheard saying that he had COVID. So they just took a trip. Mm. How you like that? Ridiculous. It, it is. It's sad. I said this, it, it, people just don't care. So all of those people that were on there and he knew that he had it. And his wife knew, but they look, they was going to Florida selfish. We're going to LA from Florida. It's selfish. So now you already know how the pressure is in an mm -hmm. airplane. Everybody breathing everybody's air. That that's just a very, very um, Yeah, it, it reminds me oh, of a trip oh, I took that. Let, let me give you this. The spokesperson for the United Airlines said uh, during the emergency, the man's wife was overheard saying her husband did indeed have COVID-related symptoms, including the loss of taste and smell. So now they're, the airline is contacting everybody that was on the flight to let them know. But that, that the thing is, is that like I can see if the dude had like the sniffles or something like that and was like, ah, you know, I'm just got a little runny nose. But that's the main, like, is there anything else that stops you from being able to taste and and uh, smell? Yeah. Any other common, illness? A common cold. Think, think back. But, but I mean, but, do, but does it like, I had a friend, she had those symptoms, right? And she said the only way that she could tell that she was eating, like, like what she was eating was based on texture and not taste, that, like no taste. Okay, okay. see, I, I didn't have those. Um, I see you, Steph. I didn't have those. Uh, symptoms i didn't have any symptoms okay so it's like boom i just went because like i said it's required for the job every three days to go get covid tested and it was like wait what that's when i contacted my job like that's the one place i worked at and that's when they came out and said that oh yeah she um she has it what you just gonna come to work like that like get out of here and then when right. you people, you, you're just putting other people at risk because like i said of your own selfish reasons. That is not, a, it's kidding. 200 passengers. First of all, I ain't getting on no flight with 200 passengers anyway. That's too True many. that, true that. You know what I mean? I, I'm like, no, that's just, no. Like, how do we social distance here? Like, <laughs> what, you go, what you gonna do when you get there? Cause I, I forgot, I, I wasn't in, wasn't it, but wasn't it American Airlines? I thought it was them that like, they had stopped their social distancing on the planes. So tech, before it was like you couldn't even get a plane that field because you had to have so many seats free. But I think they were one of the Southwest early adapters. Still, listen, Southwest still got, they still doing their social distancing because we flew to and from Houston. It was lovely because there wasn't that many of us on the plane. That's See, I feel a little bit better. I'm claustrophobic anyway. But <laughs> I feel a little better claustrophobic. I don't like people by me. You know, I don't, don't touch me. I'm, I'm that person anyway. Right. I don't allow people into my personal space. That's why it's totally, when we had the social distance, I'm totally okay with that. Like back up. I don't need you on my back. You know, um, I wouldn't, I would not fly on that flight. I, I would ask them, how many people do you, uh, you know, how many tickets do you sell? I would ask those questions prior to, cause I'm not sitting next. I don't know where you been. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all at the family cookout, doing whatever, who made the macaroni. Now, let me tell you something about this. Look, I know you shake it. Look at you shake your head. But for real, what if somebody, this is me because, you know, they got the like food with the Uber Eats and all that other stuff and you ordering food. So say somebody rude and ignorant, like at my other job and they come to work and they, I don't want to put a franchise out there because I don't want to be sued because I ain't, you ain't taking the little bit I got. But let's just say, a fast food restaurant they go or or a restaurant a good one you order i don't know salmon or whatever it is they're sick with covid they're cooking it so like they like breathing 
grilling your salmon. You know what I'm saying? And then you go, they serve you, and then you go and you eat it. Did I get COVID from y'all bringing my food? Somebody with COVID breathing on my salmon? Like, those are questions that I have. Somebody bring a pan of macaroni. Somebody, hey. pass, somebody yeah. passed away. Somebody, whoever is making the the macaroni, they bring a pan over to the house. They go, a pan of macaroni. Uh, you know, sorry for your loss. Here, y'all don't have to cook. And you're eating the macaroni. That's sound like, look, Fire Marshal Bill. And you're eating the macaroni. And then, <laughs> boom, everybody's sick. Nobody's looking at who brought the pan of macaroni. You looking at who was our next to. Listen, a lot of these restaurants now, they... Like, you have to wear that mask now, even, you know, cooking people food, stuff like that. They are not yeah. playing. Okay, so you wear the mask. Now, now I'm about to really get y'all, and y'all gonna be messed up. Y'all gonna be cooking at home. You wear a mask, and it's a cloth mask. Remember I told y'all I had the shield, and I seen the droplets. I know your girl was spitting and talking to people, <laughs> okay? So you have a cloth mask, and you're talking through that mask. And then you go on lunch break and you take your mask off, right? And everybody that's talking to you is protecting you. Everybody's talking to you. They might have droplets on the outside of the mask. But you take your mask off, bump, drink my water, that, that, come back, grab the mask. Am I grabbing it on the sterile side or am I just grabbing it? I got everybody's droplets on there and putting it on. And that's why I love, the only mask I wear is the kind you pull up over your face like this from the bottom. Okay. Because I don't, I, I, see, I see people all the time saying, man, I, I lost my mask, it fell out of my pocket. Well, mine's is always around my neck. Because, you know, and that's one thing, like I don't have to worry about, like the only way it's getting something on it is that I'm physically touching it to put it on there. You know what I mean? So I, that, that's my recommendation as far as, far as that. Just the ones but, that pull up. Yeah, but the thing was, on uh, I was gonna say, in um in Massachusetts, they 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 have their shutdown or whatever they're doing up there, and they were talking about in their restaurants how you can't even take off your mask to finish like you, oh you bite that burger, put that mask on and chew it, you know what I mean? Okay. It's like like that's how severe they're getting with their stuff. Oh, oh, so but, it's just like the because they do have masks that have um the zippers. Which is nuts to me. That's ridiculous. Right. It's like Aaron, you, you know, bad. Have is, you ever had a scarf on and you'll be eating and it's a piece of lint or some hair? Come on. You gotta look at But what if you catch your lip in that zipper? <laughs> <laughs> you catch your lip in that zipper. Right. I do have a mask. We all has. experience what you guys probably have experienced once in your life. I have a mask that has, um, you know, the like the little inflatable ball, beach balls, the little thing that you push in to keep the hold the air in. Okay. I, I bought, uh, got a mask from when I was going to the bar with this first. Uh -huh. it is, it let everybody. Somebody um, at one of the bars was selling them at, from their bar. You pop that thing open and stick that straw in your mouth, but you still got that mask on. Oh, I heard that. Shout out to that bar. Look, I'm like, shout out to that bar. Hey, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about characteristics. And um, you're like, well, what kind of characteristics is she talking about? This is this deep, man. This is deep. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you, um, when you have a child, did you know that there are certain characteristics that are only the father's trait? Mm -mm. Okay, well, we'll talk. Uh, uh, you got it's to, called a penis. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the father straight. Okay. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can't, you know, you, you, you can't be a boy unless you get a Y chromosome, right? That's, a, that's it. <laughs> the Y, the tail, right? Yeah, yeah. This, you know, well, it gets deeper than that. It's deeper than that. <laughs> you know how you sit there and you're like, "Oh yeah, um, my grandchild got that from me. My, uh, this is from me. This trait, like, okay, the the new grand boy I have. I'm so excited. I didn't know I'd be like that. I didn't even know. Well, he came out with a dimple in his chin. I was excited about it because I'm looking like, and I couldn't do nothing but laugh. Guess what? I was like, oh, he 
he has my dimple. He does not have my dimple. Know why? Because yeah. that's a, listen, it's a father's trait. There's a father's, uh, there's uh, traits of um, that babies inherit from their fathers. And I'm getting ready to tell y'all, I don't want to hurt y'all feelings, but y'all know how I do it. Real live edutainment. The height. The height comes from the father. How you like that? The height comes from, you know how you're sitting there like, oh, he's tall. My family's tall. Yeah, my family's tall. Nope, it is on. They said it's traits from the father's side. Listen, the dental health. So if your child got jacked up teeth, looking like children's chewable tablets or gummy bears, that is the father's traits. No, no. Yes, yes. So somebody on that side. Now, this is how the conversation went. Mm -hmm. I go to work. You, I go to work, and I'm excited. Just like, oh, I heard you on a grandma. Congratulations. Can I see? Would you have a, a grand uh, son or granddaughter? I said, son. So I'm talking to a guy who was similar to you, Rugal. Um, yeah. and the reason I say oh. similar, no disrespect, but, you know, full of useless information. <laughs> hey, just a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, stuff that, you get people just don't like so you, who, so who you. thinks about that. But you guys have the answers all the time. So that's why we love you. Uh, and he said, um, this is how nice he told me. I was like, he has my chin. So he says, I looked, I was like, he has my chin. He said, um, he said, your chin? I was like, yeah. He said, you should he said that's a trait of the dad. I said, no, I said, I have a dimple in my chin. I said, but my uncle has a dimple in his chin, right? Boom, about to flip you out. He was like, is it on your dad's side? Your dad's brother or your mom's brother? I said, my mom's brother. Guess what he said to me? He said, Mel, you should consider digging a little deeper because that's a father's trait. Let me tell you. So I come to the house. I forget all about the conversation. And you already know, like I know, because we talked about this. For some unknown reason, you might just mention something. See, I'm having a conversation. I'm at the job. My phone is over there in my purse. The picture pops up. They're talking about these uh, traits. That's why I said I was going to talk about it. Child, listen. Two o'clock in the morning, a picture came up. It was a picture of my father when he was a baby. And mm. guess what was there? The chin the booty chin. Yes! I was, and I'm like, because you know, he ain't no big, that was when he was younger. You know, you get, you oh already know you get God. back, your dimple disappear. When you thin, dimple, there you go. Had no idea there was, right? I was like, <gasps> but he, he said, you should consider uh, looking a little, digging a little deeper or something like that. But it was interesting. So I was like, I got to tell the listeners about this. So that was one, the dimples, okay, the dental health. And then I started looking at my children and I'm like, oh, there's the similarities. The toes. Yeah, I just. Oh, you agree with that? He agrees. Well, well, well yeah. now, now that I, I, I did a little bit of quick research and then I did, did a little bit of deep diving in what I know the, the women in my family's feet to look like versus mine. And yeah. Say, my, both of my nieces got their daddy's toes, and I saw y'all poor babe. Now, right? See, now Rugal, but with, they what? have my hands, my okay, fingers. Okay, but, but we're talking about the toes. So let's. I got to stay focused. I got to get it fast. I don't want to want to confuse mm -hmm. the people. Rugal, your son. Yes. Did you notice that he has your toes? I'm. I'm going to say yeah. Now, now we. Now that we have this conversation, yeah. Okay. If we'd have had this conversation an hour ago, I would not have. I, I don't know. <laughs> but 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 I was more or less thinking about myself versus like my sisters. Okay. Their their feet. Okay. Versus handedness, left or right handedness. The trait of the father. How about that? Let and watch this. This is really gonna flip you out. My brother. When they say dental health, I could not. He was smiling one time, and there's a picture of him smiling. His teeth are like mine. Like, it might not be exactly like straight. I mean, not no, no shade. You know what you're saying. It's, but, it's, 
it was like one of the front teeth hangs longer than the other one, the same, same one. And you got to really look. I looked at his, I was like, oh my gosh. So when I was researching, as you did, Rugo, mm -hmm. I, I was outdone and I started like, let me pinpoint this thing. Let me look at it and see. Boom, boom. I am really surprised. So real quick, the height, dental health, dimples. Now the dimples, they actually had that was highlighted on different sites that I actually looked at. I was out there, like dimples. Now look at your dimples. Rugal, you got dimples, nice dimples. But that's because I got I got fat cheeks. So, so oh, oh, sure. <laughs> so, there's only so much, you know. You're still skinny yeah. right there. You're still skinny uh -huh. with dimples with that. <laughs> yeah, that's all. And, and, this and is a skinny spot. Around it. I, I gain weight funny in funny places. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, 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 he said he gained weight in funny places. He yeah. Yeah. My, my son has them. And we have dimples, but to his, but, but also his mom though too. But guess what? They say that that's a trait that babies inherit from their fathers. All right, Nick. Now think, yeah. think back. What did you inherit from your dad? When I was younger, everybody said I looked exactly like him. So did you, you get the dental health? Do you have? You, did you look at his mom? Look like dad. Let Probably. Me steer, let me stare at your teeth. Like, Probably, I think I did get that. My dad's teeth, uh, my dad's ears. What about? But okay, so you got all of that. But you, mm -hmm. as far as these that they actually have, so those characteristics you just happen to have. But they're saying that there's eight traits babies inherit from their dad. Real mm -hmm. quick, they have eight on here, but I just grabbed a few: height, mm -hmm. dental health, dimples, toes, fingerprints. Oh, the important one: mental disorders. Mental disorders, yes, that, that one, mental disorders. If you have a mental disorder, most likely you've inherited that from the father. That's the trait of the dad. How about that? And I do know a few people that- I got his attitude. Mental disorders. Well, no, I know, I'm just saying. Not I'm attitude, thinking about other not stuff. personality. We're talking the actual um, yeah, okay. mental disorders. And it's interesting. Hmm. One of the uh, listeners actually said they inherited their height from their dad. It's interesting. And I thought it was an interesting topic. I was like, this is deep. Let me, but when he said you, sh you should consider digging a little deeper. And that My phone, dad. back to what I was oh. saying, that phone was over in the other nurse's station in my purse. How did the phone, and then they gonna pop up with these Baby traits inherited. Who is on the phone listening? Why do we have missing people? Nobody should be missing if the phone is listening to my conversation over there on the other side. Mm -hmm. They talking about some, oh, it's algorithms. Isn't the algorithm my run? You listening to my conversation, so there should be no missing people at all. What else did you notice from, uh, oh, intelligence. They said intelligence is another trait. You know what's funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, will get, I will get myself in trouble, man. Um, I remember having a conversation, like when my son was young, when he was uh -huh. little, little, they used to always say that he looks like his mother. And I was like, but he thinks like me, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that was my comeback. And now I know that there's scientific evidence to prove scientific that. Scientific right? evidence that this is true. Yeah. I think like my mom, I look like her now, you know, younger I look like my, but I think like my mom and I got her height because she was short. My dad was like six feet. I'm five three. My mom was five one, five two. So yeah, I definitely got her height. <laughs> but yeah, some of the other stuff. Can I, it's, um, it's not just your mother. You got right. that side. Uh, my right, my dad. Family. Well, everybody in my grab, my grab, my dad's father how was tall. tall his mother was tall. How tall are you, Nick? I'm five three. Okay, you're five three. You said your mom was five one. Was anybody on your dad's side, sister, brother, aunt, somebody on his side? See, that's the thing you got to think a little further. And think, all of his, all of his sisters think, were tall. Thinking, thinking, they're talking about intelligence. Uh oh. So, go ahead, Rugo. What, which, what do you have to say? I, I, I looked at a website called Family Education, and they have eight baby traits inherited from their mother. 
Go ahead. What you got for the mother? The baby um, for the mother. Go ahead, Rugal. Sleeping style. Okay. I don't know what that's about. Um, well, that's if you sleep on your right side, your left side, on your back. Go ahead. Like they said, toss and turn and insomnia. Hair color. Hair color. Okay. Hair texture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Temper. Now that's. Listen, she said she got hair from her dad, but go ahead. Uh -huh. Healthy eating habits. Well, you know what? Now let's talk about this with using traits. <laughs> Is that a learned thing? Because usually the mother cooks. So, and then as time goes up, you, here's why. As time go on, you cook like what you're used to eating. Just like when someone thinks that their mother can cook and it'd be nasty as all get out to everybody else, but the child thinks but, it's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? I want dis I want discredit this one a little bit. Okay. It, because this is what they said. They said, what you feed your baby, what you feed your body and your baby during pregnancy isn't just important while they're in in the womb. It could have lifelong effects on the on the little ones. Okay. One study done done in the rats showed that a poor pregnancy diet could affect uh, a gene uh, linked to insulin production, which could increase uh, the risk of type two diabetes. But it was a study done in mice. You know, they, it, there's no human trials done on it. But go ahead. Interesting, you should say that. My daughter had a son. His his the issue was that his blood sugar was so low they kept having to get it up now she don't she was drinking mountain dew so hopefully not while she was pregnant but i'm, I'm gonna act like she wasn't but i know before pre-pregnancy she was throwing back mountain dews which is a lot of sugar but normally when you have a, a baby the baby eats feeds off of your sugar so that's why it's low because now okay guess what p she didn't evicted me i'm on my own so the baby's blood sugar can run low directly after birth because of that, because it's feeding up the sugar off the mom. So I just kind of like watched it because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't from me. Now, guess what else? On my mom's side, pretty healthy. Like my grandmother just had like a multivitamin all the way to her last days. My mother takes nothing. Where did this diabetes come from? Hold on, I'm shocked. My dad passes away and it's everywhere. And so we're looking through the stuff. They're like, who needs this glucometer? Who needs that? Who needs this? Who needs that? Yeah, I was like, wait a second. Did not know this was going on over here. And um, I'll put a little history out there. My dad was in the, um, he was in the war. So he, when he came back from the war, mentally he wasn't the same okay he wasn't the same he was a medic and that's another thing that's interesting with these vaccinations that we're talking about they had vaccinated them remember when they all went to the nom well even if you read about it in history um they were vaccinated and they're who did they vaccinate medics but that's your first line of defense let's make sure they're okay boom people weren't coming people responded differently they reacted differently they weren't coming back from the war the same, they saw babies being killed, you know, so mentally that was the issue. So I pray for my mental status, especially it's a, if it's a trait of the father. So that's um pretty much where I'm at. Go ahead. Well, well that's trauma though. That's trauma, post-traumatic stress yeah. syndrome. Yeah. yeah. So that's, but I still do it. Let me yeah. check it. Make sure all yeah, I get the diabetes from my dad now that I'm thinking about it. My mother was diabetic, but she was hypo low blood sugar me and my dad right and and you're type two right mm -hmm. yes okay so you you just have to watch those things because i couldn't figure out why my son was but then i learned no, so, no, yeah. uh, rubo did you get any other information from that one the um, from another? some some of them i don't know that it said migraines was another one for moms and it talked about dominant hands but i think your article challenges that as men, mm -hmm. this one says that if the mother, it, I, if if um, if the mother is left-handed and the father is right-handed, it's a good chance the child to be left-handed. But my nephew it, is left-handed and his mother is left-handed, but the girls are right-handed. My brother's right-handed. 
Well, well, we listen on these articles that I read. That was the trait. I don't want to confuse yeah. anybody. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I just and then they then they, then the intelligence was. I think there's ones that are more popular that both sexes want to have. <laughs> want to say they, they're they the dominant one. I'm smart. Yeah. I'm not smart as. Here we go. Uh -huh. But I think the most important thing, though, when we talk about nature, is that we got to remember nurture. Spend yeah. some time with those damn kids. Teach them something. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and you Absolutely. know, so. So you need yeah. all of that. You need to encompass all of that. Teach them mm -hmm. something. Look, yeah. they're gonna learn it either way. If yeah. it's from you or from people in the street. But back to the food. Um, if the mom eats healthy, then the child they get that trait from the parent. <laughs> I, I can I can kind of see that. I, I'm I'm still so it's certain things that I think like I, I mean I can see that but I also think like well mom's the one if she's an unhealthy eater she's the one if we look at gender roles more than likely she would be the one making the meals and That's if she's right. unhappy then they're, they're gonna eat unha un unhealthy I should not ha happy unhealthy let me you know. let me so whoever's you. cooking whatever's cooking whoever's cooking that's the one yeah here, here I used to have a. a concept that if you were a larger person that you could cook <laughs> i did i did if you had the recipes you know the recipes up under here that's why if you had if you had big arms that swing those was full of recipes <laughs> so i thought that if you were a bigger person that you could cook i really did no lie i have been deceived <laughs> I have been deceived because a friend of mine, she, you know, was bigger. She had a lot of children. They said mom can cook since we're talking about this. And I was like, oh, okay. So I decided, because I wasn't like the best cooker, you know, I didn't know nothing about that. It, I, it was all new to me because like I grew up, I didn't eat meat when I grew up because my mother... I didn't eat any of that stuff. That's probably why I was really thin when I was younger, too. I'm like, we hungry up in this mug. You know what I'm saying? But so my friend, who was a bigger, fuller figure woman, and her kids said she could cook, she was like, I'll cook Easter dinner. So I'm like, okay. She going to take on the main, one of the main meals of the year, huh? Yeah, but I thought she could cook. So I'm like, yeah, just go ahead and you cook. She said, and I'll bring it over. So I'm like, yeah, well, I'm the fun person. So I got like, oh, everybody here go to Easter baskets. We go to Peter Cottontail, lay down little cotton balls. I'm, I got all that handled. I got my part handled. Go to the store, I got the dessert. You know, I got that part handled. So mine decide they just wanted to eat their candy. So I'm like, no, you have to eat something first. And then I had a guest there at my at the place, and they said, Mel, taste it. Now, mind you, I'm always on the move, going, hosting, and make sure everybody having a good time. She said, taste it. So I haven't eaten anything. So I go in there and I look at this dressing. Now, remember, this is my younger days. I ain't got to cook all like that. So I go look at this dressing. She pulls it back. And I was like, ooh, I said, uh, <laughs> I was like, ooh, that must, I said, that got too much sage, huh? The person, listen, she gonna look at me. She was like, you don't even know what sage is. I said, mm, but it sound green because this dressing was like green. So the person that told me male tasted was in my ear and they said, yes, sage is green. So that was like my phone a friend. You know what I'm saying? She's like, yes, sage is green. I said, okay. So I was like, whoo, the macaroni looked amazing. Tasted, tasted it. Let me speak proper diction. It had no taste. How, listen, I ain't have COVID 20 years ago. So my taste buds was legit. <laughs> I sat there and was like, listen, it was so pretty. The color was amazing. I don't know what happened. So, Rugal, you cook. I, that's listen. That's still a mystery. How does macaroni not have a taste? Imitation cheese, maybe. I don't know. 
<laughs> they ain't feeding me like they're supposed to because I asked somebody to do macaroni and cheese for my brother's 40th birthday party. How was the macaroni? Like, how does the macaroni, though, the taste? It, it, it was no taste whatsoever. It, listen. So do you like, because the cheese will give it taste. I, I don't know how it didn't it, but it was nasty. And then on top of that, the head. No, the wait, head no, we got to stay focused. Well, I'll listen to your story later, but you about to go all I already know. It, it got to be know. imitation cheese. It got to be, it gotta be fake cheese. Imitation, it got to be like yeah. a cheese food product or something. Oh. That's the only thing I can think of. Because like. Yeah, imitation cheese don't melt well at all. It doesn't melt at all. But Maybe they use melt. like number Maybe they use like 1% milk or something. I don't know. Maybe it's the milk. I listen to the audience call in. Do what you like. Talk to me. And it could have been like. It not could not taste. It could, what type of. Do you remember what kind of, what, what kind of cheese it was? No, like, it was, was it, over 20 years ago and they brought it. Do you, so you remember this, what color it was? Yeah. Was it, was it whiter it looking? Was, it was whiter looking though. It, but it was picture perfect. Yes. Like if we had but, Facebook back then. Oh, she probably should have a gang of likes. She'd have been in a food group. But had they tasted it, they would have kicked her out the food group. But you usually yeah. like when you make macaroni and cheese, you use like a sharper, more pungent cheese, you know, like mm -hmm. the sharp cheddar or, or you know, th those kind of things. You know, you, you, usually have, you know, so I don't know what they might have had a lighter cheese or something. Lighter I don't macaroni. <laughs> That's what it was. I ain't never seen it. I, I was shocked. But, so the dressing, I didn't taste the dressing because it was too green for me. Um, it however, was too green for you. It was too green. <laughs> I was like, it, it was too green. I was like, that ain't gonna work for me. So the moral of the story is, Easter was Sunday. I was so upset. I went over to my grandmother's house, and I asked her how to make certain things. And I went to the store on Monday, and we had Easter dinner on Monday. I bought everything over and cooked it because here's my thing if i can't cook and you could cook and it tastes like that i'm about to get down and the reason i couldn't cook is because it started with the boiled egg i can't cook boiled eggs how you mess that up? <laughs> i can't listen i can't i mean how you do that i'm about to tell you <laughs> i keep burning these boiled eggs right so then my mother made me sit in the kitchen. I was like, forget it. I don't want it. She made me, this I was younger. She made me sit in the kitchen and like conquer this. I sat in the kitchen, y'all. Stared at the pot because she made me stare at it until it was done. Okay, that was my punishment. Wouldn't you know, I burnt the eggs again. Guess what happened? It was popping. They said, they was like, pop. Snapped me right out of it. I started daydreaming. Rugal, she did that a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and I did it again still. We in the room and all of a sudden you hear this poof. And her mom just said, didn't I tell you, you can't leave the kitchen? I cannot make a boiled egg. I still <laughs> can't make a boiled egg. I thought it was popcorn or something. No, it was a boiled egg. Boiled egg. I get distracted. <laughs> that's the answer. I get distracted. And, and you know, I think that's, I think focus is a lot, has a lot to do about cooking because the, the best way to ruin a dish is to burn it. Then the other way is to, is to not, um, is, is to not be patient with what you put in there. You know, you get some people like, I'm just going to dump this in there, dump that and splash you this. You me sip my coffee out. <laughs> so. That's it. Cause I can bake, but bake take baking takes time, so I can do everything I need to do and then go back. Right. So you might have a point there. But you can set a timer for an egg though, too, though. Like it's no, it's really not a mystery. Maybe well, you need to put more water in the pot when you start off. Water, Nick, tell him the where the water was. The water was full. <laughs> so that was, well, she had like a three quart we pan. Just, you know, we just hear this pop. Poof. Got distracted. I started bumping my gums, talking too much. And then that's what ended up happening. I don't know. I tried. Look, when I left out, when I left out, she was like, Do you smell it in the hallway? No, nah, you good? <laughs> like, what the heck? Like, like, like microwave popcorn. 
Right. Yeah, that is the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. So what's the proper time to cook a boiled egg? Uh, is the water already at a boiling point when you start off or are you just putting well, them? Wait, no, because you can't put a boiled egg. I mean, you can't put an egg in boiling water to crack. I, I've never had that happen. Really? So the water could be boiling like macaroni. I never like like I I've, I've put on the yeah I've done I put on the water before and then like you know had it now was it always to a boiling point I don't know but I've never had an egg crack on me because I put it in the hot water. I would think that an egg would crack if you put it in hot water. I would just think that. It, it I'm may. Not listening, audience. Okay, fifteen minutes for a boiled egg. Why fifteen minutes. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Is that too long? That seems like a long time. Also, oh, the yolk is green. I think when the yolk turns green, it's, it's a sign that you overcooked it. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm like, okay. But I'm going to try, I'm going to set a timer, 15 minutes. Like, like you ever, I like between 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. You ever, eat, you ever eat an Easter, you ever notice how like most Easter eggs are green? Like when you, when the, the yolk is green? Listen, clearly I do because that is always green. I know about <laughs> well, the green yolk. Well, the thing is usually because like people like boil a whole bunch of eggs at one time. And so you're unsure if they're fully done or not. So you keep them boiling. <laughs> okay. The li but one, uh, a listening audience member said that 15 minutes and then you put the, the lid on the pot and I guess let it cook. Let's see. How do you make a boiled egg? He said he had a water boiling and drop it in. I just really feel like it'll crack. Let's see. Sure. Let's see. Okay. I used to do that. The okay. only time it'll Where's crack is crack? if it will only time it will crack is if I would drop it in there. Just drop it in there. What I do is get a big I, I thought you were about to say drop it. I'm like, I'm do it. Go ahead. Um, but what I do is just get a big spoon. If I let it boil, I'll get a spoon, put the egg in there, and lower it down. It usually don't crack. But now, usually, I'll just put all my eggs in there, fill it up, and then put it on a pot. Some, one of them might crack, still be cracked, but for the most part, yeah. Oh, oh, see, I was about to mess that up again. All right, Nick, another Nick. She said, so, no, you turn it off, and you put the lid, the lid on it. So she said, start with cold water, then you turn it off. I mean, after Oh, uh, okay. This is, I okay. went to um, Pillsbury.com. Oh, shucks. We know they know what they're doing. Go ahead. <laughs> to say this. Now, this is for cooking six eggs, right? They said ingredients. Six eggs, water. You need a stock pot with a, with a fitted lid, a large slotted spoon, a bowl, ice, ice and water for an ice bath, and a timer, right? So first step, carefully... Uh -huh. Yeah, because after... And you can't peel the egg when it's hot, so what they do is once you take the eggs out, you put it in an ice bath and let it let it cool down completely, and that enables you to be able to peel it without t ripping the egg up, and the the peel yeah. comes off easier. So, oh. so, so what I do at the in that process, and I actually made eggs last night, was um, <laughs> I pour out the I pour out the hot water and I pour in cold water. But before I pour out the before I pour out the when I pour out the hot water, I. I take the pan and I shake it, right? And when I shake it, it cracks the shells. Then I add in cold water and then I do continue that process, but not like a whole lot. And it seems like it takes it off that way. That That's just what I do. That's, right? pretty, but, that's pretty good. Cause I get yeah. upset when the shell don't come off, I end up throwing the egg away and get frustrated. Yeah. So, so, is, so they say here, carefully place uh, uncooked eggs into a single layer uh, in a stock pot, add cold water until the eggs are submerged under uh, under about a, a one inch of water. Bring a full bring to a full boil, uncovered. Uh, immediately turn off heat, remove from the burner, and cover and cover. What? Step Nicole, the shop talk listener is that's the what? Yeah. I'm calling Nicole for all my cooking needs. She says, I set a timer for three minutes uh, for for a very runny egg, uh, four minutes for a runny soft boiled egg, six minutes for a creamy custard uh, medium boiled egg, eight minutes for a firm 
but still creamy hard boiled egg. 10 minutes for a firm hard boiled egg. 12 minutes for a very firm uh, hard boiled egg. It'll okay. be 12 minutes then. Cause yeah, I ain't gonna all right, it. so that's the 12, 15. All right, that's it. Yeah. Well, that look, I'm like, that works. Cause I'm like, well, wait a minute. We're gonna And remember that's six eggs. Oh, that's six. That was six eggs they were cooking. Well, how do you have boiled eggs with um runny and soft? Like, I ain't never heard of that. You, you, you heard of those before. Soft. You probably see you probably seen fancy movies where the people have an egg for breakfast. And it's in that little thing that looks like a champagne, uh, or like a mm -hmm. they crack it. And they, like, you never seen that before? Nah, she's not eating raw eggs. I'm not interested. You you ever eat an over easy egg at Sunny Side Epic? I don't, like that. I don't like oh, okay. That. Yeah, they're I great like with green. toast. I like the green yolk. You like the green. So you like you want yours cooked for thirty five like, minutes? Like just minutes. like steak. Like you making chitlins or something? Done. <laughs> Hey, Rugo, what's happening in the movie world? Man, well, it's that time of year where I'm actually trying to get myself into the Christmas uh, spirit. It's been kind of difficult for me. I don't know why I'm a late adapter at this point when it's right around the corner. Haven't really bought a lot of gifts either. But <laughs> so there's some work I still got to do. But uh, with that being said, I think it would be a great day since next Friday to discuss what are our favorite Christmas movies. A Christmas story? A Christmas story. I like a Christmas story. I think it's I think it's pretty awesome. You know, are you familiar with that? Yes. Three thumbs up or 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 what? Three. All right. I recommend a Christmas story and so does TBS because for years they've always had the tradition of showing it for 24 oh, hours wow. prior to uh, from Christmas Eve to Christmas Day and so it was always a favorite of mine because uh I would, you know, um, helping Santa in his workshop, putting together uh, the gifts and things of that nature, it would be background noise. And it felt like, yes. I got to say this. Okay, since we talk about Christmas story, y'all going to be mad at me, but whatever. On the Christmas story, I have been accustomed to seeing a Christmas story. And remember the dinner and the Chinese restaurant was open, right? Yes. Well, I feel some type of way when the Chinese restaurants be closed. Did they just like... <laughs> And, and I don't know, <laughs> Nick Lavin, though, but for real, I don't know if it's the, like, is it because I watch a Christmas story? Or did they come to this country and just became accustomed to ours? Because remember, they had the Christmas music playing, but you could always find a restaurant open. Now they closed. They on Christmas. They're they closed now, right. Well, it's, it's, on Christmas break. Well, it's about revenue. If, if you realize that no one's coming, are you going to be open? They, they was open on Christmas Story, weren't they? Well, I think Christmas Story also took place in like, what, the 1950s, too? Listen, it's 2020 now. And I think it's actually based in... I want some fried rice on Christmas. I can't get none because they off on Christmas. Then you need to find a recipe because guess what? Some people, they, some are... Uh, People are Christian, you know. They they might be having a holiday with their Lord too. But right? they don't they have they got the Christmas after, right? That's the Chinese New Year. That's yeah, the, oh, okay. I know yeah. they party for the whole month. Like, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is different well, norms. Christmas story. Okay, what else you got? I'm, I'm um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Number one. Yeah. Favorite favorite scene from it. My favorite scene. Is when that fool flew down the hill on that on that uh, when they polished that stuff on there and flew. Uh, that was my favorite scene. My mine is when he gets his uh, bonus and he thinks he's gonna have enough money to put in the pool. And he get like what fifty fifty dollar gift certificate or something crazy, uh, and he start cussing out everybody. Oh wait a minute. The one with the cat biting on the thing when the when the uncle with her would plug it up, the cat just said, Wham! Randy. Uh -huh. okay. like smoking. Now my favorite part was when <laughs> cousins came up and they emptied their porta potty. Oh yeah. That was his there. I was like, he was like, what are you doing? He was like, oh yeah, I gotta empty uh, the porta potty. Who does that right there on her on the street? And I like envisioned that. I said, if somebody came. And this is what you'd be like, here you go, here they go. We only got to deal with them for one day. They're coming up for the holiday. That was my favorite uh, scene of National Lampoons. 
Christmas vacation. But okay, go ahead. What you what you got? I, I'm trying to hurry up so you can get on to coming to America. Go ahead. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I particularly like the Nightmare Before Christmas. However, that can be a Halloween show as well. You know, oh, whatever. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think it's, it's like an animation. Yeah, scary. yeah. But I think that I think the I think the whole idea is like the the thing I like about it is the I may have a certain norm, but I I I admire what somebody else is doing. But instead of me, like, kind of like seeing what's traditional for them, I try to embody it and take it on as my own. And sometimes we see that kind of collaboration not being really the best thing. And I think this is one of those things that you can look at that and say, well, you know, like um, cult, like it, it identified a culture vulture, if you will. You know what I mean? So if you look at it from that perspective. But I, I enjoy that. I like, and it's a lot, a, lot of, a lot of good music in it. I like, I like that show. Um, What's the other one? Uh, Home Alone. I, you know what? You didn't like that. I like Home Alone. I could, I could, I could not watch Home Alone and be okay ever. Uh, <laughs> like I, I, you know what I mean? I mean, I could, like I, I would. Die Hard is more of a Christmas movie to me than Home Alone. Really? Die Hard is the ultimate Christmas movie. How is that a Christmas movie? What are you talking about? The cop is estranged from his wife and the only way the only thing that brings them back together is him coming from new york to la to spend the holidays with his wife and his children and then he has to save the day <laughs> on christmas at a christmas party oh lord come on now die hard a lot of people will agree with me on that one um <laughs> Uh, there's always what's the Charlie Brown's Christmas thing? Charlie Brown um, always coming up. He didn't come on this year. Oh, oh. Did, it bridge. didn't come on. Or, I thought somebody said it was on. It was on like right after Thanksgiving or something like that. I don't know. But a year without a Santa Claus, Heat Miser and and, and the brother. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. It's like that's as old as it is. It was out when we were little, a year without Santa Claus. When Santa Claus decided that he wasn't gonna celebrate Christmas or he wasn't gonna work on Christmas, he was sick and he said he was gonna retire or he was taking a vacation on Christmas. Y'all remember Heat Miser and, and, and the Nick, brother Cold Miser? Nick, I think that was a setup because Santa always came for our Christmas. I think your parents might have let y'all watch that because Santa wasn't gonna show up. And oh, no, Santa showed up every year. Y'all oh, ain't never watched that. Y'all got to watch it. Mm, Santa came. The Jackson Fives and the Temptations was playing, and Santa showed up every year. Oh, yeah, Santa showed up every year, but that was my, that's my favorite Christmas movie, A Year Without I, a Santa Claus. I think that was a setup to say, just in case they know that movie. <laughs> Just in case. We, we, that thing is older than us. us. We'll put this on. That cartoon is older than us. And y'all talking about y'all ain't never seen it. Now, but what's the what's the name of it again? A uh, uh, Year Without the without Santa Claus or The Year Without Santa Claus. Okay, I'm going to make sure I kind of check that out and see it. You said Girl, it's a listen, movie. A, a, AMC been playing the crap out of it and so has Freeform. Okay, I'll, um, I'm going to look it up. I'll Google it. Yep, the year I'll without a Santa Claus. You will crack up when it comes to the, the two brothers. Okay, I'm going to check it out. What else is there? I don't know any other, like, Christmas movies at all. So let's go with uh, Coming to Scrooge. America 2. Scrooge. No, oh, Scrooge, okay. I don't know if I saw that either. I, I know Christmas plays and stuff like that that I go to see. So I wasn't really... Um, a television the one with the Charles Dickens uh, Scrooge, not the the very first one, but the second one with uh Charles C. Scott. I like that one. Okay, now talk um talk to us because Rugal had to step away really fast. Talk to us about coming to America too. The pictures that that they've been putting out on uh, social media now. It looks amazing. They, they got crazy ass Leslie. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Ding. No. Crazy behind Leslie Jones. Okay. Playing in there. She is funny. She is don't funny. Tell, don't tell what's going on. We talk about um, I didn't know where you disappeared. You're back. We're talking about coming yeah. to America too. 
That's okay. what she sounds about. Go ahead, finish, Nick. Yeah, but they got her in there, and I guess she playing a baby mama. And I'm sitting there going, but how is it? But it's a lot of son that he didn't ever knew he had. But they have all of the original characters in there, I guess, except for, of course, Madge Sinclair. But all of the original characters, and they have some new ones. Okay. So Wesley Snipes is in it, Tiana Taylor. Um, uh, who else did I see? Tiana Taylor, that don't really intrigue me. But Wesley Snipes, I'm glad he's doing coming on. Yeah, back. Tiana Taylor is playing his daughter. Okay. Um, so is he then, supposed to be the? Is he supposed to be like the new uh, McDowell's guy or whatever? That's about James Evans. I think, yeah, I think so. They, but he, David got him. He's back in it. I mean, and they're back in New York. They back with the two characters at the barber shop. So, like I said, they have all of the characters in there. That I just didn't see Mad and Mad Sinclair. She passed away, didn't she? Yeah. Okay, so that's the only reason why she ain't in it then. But everybody else is in it. And then so they we have were talking about Rugo was talking about coming to America too earlier this year and i guess yeah it's been talking about for a long time it was actually supposed to be released in theaters for christmas and then uh amazon bought it then there was some talk about them releasing it then now i mean now it's going to be released in march and st- mm-hmm. so we still have to wait now what they're doing now like i told you guys i like productions and plays and stuff like that so um what i actually was looking forward to is like the nutcracker we know how it goes but what they're doing now is putting it on the drive through put putting like plays and productions on the drive through uh theaters mm. drive in oh, drive in yeah. yeah. drive through yeah well you actually do drive through you drive through oh, look, look. drive through in front of the screen and then drive on the drive in look, you can go to the drive through then go to the drive in <laughs> they don't want you to do that though they want you to go to the drive in and then go to the concession stand that's <laughs> <laughs> they 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 drive they in and it's dead. Jason Lyric, I'm nervous about this concession stand scene. <laughs> right. What? What? No, was that? Was that Jason? Jason? That was Jason Lyric. Right? No, no, it was um, it was uh, it poetic, was, uh poetic, justice. Justice. poetic justice. I knew it was something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm nervous about that. But they're charging forty five dollars per car to see it on the screen. What's your thoughts on that? Um, no. So what they're doing, like they have a stage and they have a camera set up and they just do the live on the on the big screen at $45 per car. Listen, somebody in one of them cars is going to be filming it and then they're going to download it and then you can get it on Fire Stick for free. I ain't paid no $45. I'm talking, I'm talking about productions though. So like you get dressed to go to the production. I don't mind paying like $35, $45 to go to production, but I like the whole ambiance of it. I like exactly the being oh, in the I'm theater. Not, I'm at a live production. Not but, right. Exactly. Well, I paid forty five dollars for that, but not to be driving up to a screen in my car. Nah. Uh-huh. I, well, well, you know what though? I, for Thanksgiving, I started a new tradition. I watch. <laughs> I watch Hamilton. Okay. You know, and it was three hours. Uh, I yeah, but but the point was was that like. It's a play, everybody. You got to go see the play. You got to go see the play. I watched it at home, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Uh-huh. And I didn't have to, like, travel to another city. I didn't have to, like, you know, worry about what if I heard what they said because I had my captions on below. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, I you had to worry about nobody like me talking to yeah, them. Yeah, I, I had to worry about that. I had to worry about, like, look at them. They don't know how to rap. Uh, remember, remember that dude? Well, why, why, why don't you go get the refreshments? That was ridiculous. But um, <laughs> he did have a raspy voice. I, I don't. I don't know that. I don't think that that's a. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. And the reason I say that is because some theaters, especially Tinseltown, was good for this, where they would have like the Phantom of the Opera on, on one day or something like that, where it's like these exclusives they would only do on one day. They wouldn't carry it like for weeks or whatever. Okay. But but it was it wasn't forty five dollars. It was just the price of a movie ticket. But you got to be exposed to something that you were usually only gave, be able to see on like PBS, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But here's the thing: like, okay, all of us in theater, mm-hmm. and you, I'm shocked that you would say that even be in theater to actually be like, I'd rather be in the car. So, well, I'm just, I'm just saying, what? like, you got to get it out there. You yeah. know, right, right now, I mean, this is the best way. Forty-five. So, so, in a car, like, 
You got to leave in your car. And you know, I got to go to the bathroom. Like I'm not at home. I got to get out of my nice warm vehicle, go to the concession stand. Hope I, it is no poetic justice. Again, you know, recently, like, I, I, I was traumatized by that movie, clearly. I see. Now, and then go back to the car. I'm going to miss something. And I don't have to dress up. I'm where. But if you place. if you were in the theater and you had to relieve yourself, you would miss something anyway, right? No, we wait till they say intermission will be in ten minutes, or I'll look. I'm gonna. But if you cannot wait, then I'll go ahead and go. But see what happens is you go prior to. But if I'm going to the concession stand, I got a whole bunch of drinks. When you go to a theater, you're not bringing your food inside there. That's true. So I'm, well, I'm not drinking and watching it and all that other stuff. I'm well, there. I'm dressed. When I ticket price determines my outfit. Okay, forty five dollars. What you wear? I'm not gonna sit in my car and mess up no outfit. Be Rico. I'm not doing right. it. So but that's you, what I'm saying. But really, you ain't like if you went to the if you went to the theater, you paying like forty five dollars just for one ticket. They're saying forty five dollars for a carload of folk. Then, then, then look at it on the flip side. These are these are actor actors, actresses, and actors. Uh oh, he went out. It's his internet service. Oh, okay. So, like forty five dollars, like you said, Nick, you would rather go into the theater at those prices. Forty five dollars with a car load. Do you right. know how close that is? Be quiet. I need you to sit there. Be quiet. Who bored? Who snoring? Who's, I mean, you do have people that snore at the theater as well, or, you know, they go to sleep. But what do you do? Like, I don't know if I'd be interested in paying $45 with a car load of people. Get a, get an eight-passenger van it, 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 that can fit maybe one more person, and each of y'all pay $5 in a sweatsuit or whatever, so some jeans on your pajamas and a blanket, there you yeah, go. Exactly. But I ain't paying $45 for it. me. Or me and one other person. We are not doing now, that. I didn't think about that. Yes, the more people that you have, you could cut the cost and you you could go in half. Right. That I'll do. Five, oh, five dollars. Here you go. Forty five dollars, and I'm not by myself for me and my. Mm -mm. Okay. See, that's oh, there you go. Now that makes sense. I might have to do something like that. But then you make right. sure your immediate family because. You don't want to be just picking up people. Next thing you know, be like, we went to see the Nutcracker, and now we all sick. And right now, we all got COVID. Nah, right. nah. Like, what do you do? What do yeah. you mean? Like, exactly. how does that work? And then listen, take everybody temperature before they get in the van. I, I need to take your temperature. Oh, your temperature is elevated what, by one degree. You can't get in by. Everybody wear their mask. You said ain't wearing mask. Now, how do you deal with? If you have all those people and you're in the theater or the drive-in, not the theater, you're in the drive-in, who's making the concession stand run? Because the last time I went to the drive-in, they had the flashlight. They checking to make sure, see how many people in the car. And I guess making sure that you don't have any snacks or anything. I haven't been driving in a while. And the last couple of times we did go, honey, trust me, I know how to have some food. <laughs> I will. And I used to do it in the movie theater. Okay. I'm going to hide me some food. I'm going to go to Arby's or something, hide me some food. And the only thing I might get is a drink. And then I might even hide that in my purse. My auntie, she good for it. She'll fry chicken and everything else. They put it in the big old bag and take it in there. Wait a minute. Y'all fried chicken and Arby's? Going to the movies back in the day, yeah. How do you have movies like movie uh -huh. movies, fried chicken, uh -huh. Arby's? How does that work? Oh, I used to go to Arby's and just take the bag, either take the food out and put it in my purse. But uh -huh. my aunt, she would fry chicken and stuff, put it in a little bag and not something that you know in her in foil and everything put it in her big old purse and be passing out when we get in here you want the chicken you want did you want yes ma'am <laughs> yeah. that's crazy that's and it's in the dark I don't know if I'm able to I don't know if I'm able to eat in the dark like that we did with no problem 
Where nobody paying that, that no about two five dollars for no hot dog. Get out of here. Okay, so tell me, so you got the chicken. What did y'all do with the bones? Put it back in the um foil. Okay, so she ain't throw them on the floor for the no. Well, that's a good. That that's good. Get out of she would she would have like a a, a little garbage bag, uh-huh. and we put our garbage in there, tied up, and then we walked out, threw it in the garbage. Okay, well that's a good thing. So back to coming to America too. What is? Let me see. On a scale of one to ten, what's your chances of going to see it on the first? Ten. Okay, so. Comedy, you said Leslie was in there. Leslie, she all right. But Leslie is in the Coming to America too. Uh-huh. Okay. Leslie, Wesley. Uh, let me see. They got a couple new people, but like I said, the majority of the cast is, is coming back. Okay, good. Okay, okay. And when is uh Coming to America 2 being released? They still ain't saying exactly. What what did you it's say? Supposed to be in March. Wait a minute, Rugo, I can't, you gotta unmute yours. There we go. I'm like, I see your lips moving. Yeah, I thought it was like March 21st or 18th or something like okay. that, but who knows? Who knows because, who knows? We've been waiting. So tell me, what else you got? Anything else in the movie world? I'm scared to do finish my segment. I keep getting cut off. All right, I'll be quiet. <laughs> we gotta be quiet, Nick. No, no, I mean the computer oh. is cutting off, not, not y'all, you know. <laughs> Um, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, that, that, that about wraps it up. That does. I'm did right. you check out Ma Rainey? The oh, um, I I did not watch that yet. I'm sorry. One thing I did want to talk about, but I, I don't want to really spoil it for anybody. But I don't know if you saw the finale to season two of The Mandalorian or not. Amazing. Is it? Yeah, they really throw out some real fan service on that last one. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Now, listen, Boston, I don't know if you guys know, we thought we were kind of like calming down on the protesters, but Boston uh, PD, uh, they um, pepper sprayed, I don't know what was actually going on. Uh, They pepper sprayed, I guess, some protesters. And before the one Boston uh, police department cop said that, he said, I want to hit this a hole before prior to sp- pepper spraying them. So they were pretty much excited to pepper spray the protesters. Wow! So they're back. But what about the protesters that was uh, vandalizing these black churches and ripping down black? Uh, that happened recently. That happened right now. Huh? They doing that right now today? I thought that was before though. No, that was like during, the, wasn't it this past week or just last week when they was doing all that? And then protests, they said that Donald Trump ain't get on there and call them thugs like he was calling the protesters about George uh, Floyd and everything else. None of that mess. Okay, but let's let's talk about what happened just yesterday where the um, Boston police officer, I, I wanted to make sure I gave you the uh, his quote verbatim. I got a little left. I want to hit this a hole, so he like just opened, opened up fire, opened up can, like just sprayed them. So Boston will be having, you know, there's going back. Well, I ain't gonna say. Look, they will be having like protests, and they had it was so organized with the protesters. They'll be having a protest uh, coming up this week. It was so organized with the protests, and it's sad to say that so many, so many of us have to protest due to police brutality. But to actually say, and they have him recorded where he says that he has a and he wants to spray this a hole. So that's he to lose his job. I mean, they start holding more of them accountable, and then it's bad because, like, like we talked about last week, it's very bad because then you sort of mix up the bad ones, and that's kind of bad on the good ones, you know what I mean? Because you have very, a lot of good police officers who try to do, who are doing the right thing, but because of all of what's going on with these bad officers, it's like nobody wants to trust the police. And so it's like, yeah, they need to start more severe consequences on some of these police officers, these bad ones. It's just, they, because they're getting out of control. 
it's getting out of control. Okay, do you remember the story of uh, Tiandra Christon? That was the one who had her child had died. Her child was found um, back in, it was probably about like a year and a half, two years ago. She had, her daughter had died and she wrapped her in a plastic bag. But what she ended up doing was, they said it threw her in the water. It's, she's from Texas. The Texas, let me find it. Texas mom who pretended the life-size doll was the daughter she threw in the lake. She's finally gotten sentenced. So she ended up having a life-size doll and pretending it was her daughter. But she threw her in the lake like a year and a half ago. And she was sentenced to 20 years. Oh, I did see it. Um, I did wait, see wait, it. What's, she, the, what's her name? Because that was a, the, the picture that they had on the news. Her name, her name is Tiandra Kristen. That's a white lady with a name uh, Tiandra? Oh, no, she's black. And she first she was saying that her daughter was missing. <clears throat> had, she had threw her in there and they found her. The people that look, she wanted to say it was, you know, like it was a life-size doll. What was your question, Rugo? So she did actually kill her daughter. She did. Her daughter was dead, but she had a, she said, she acted like she was a life-size doll after she was dead. So I'll, um, let me see. I'm trying to, here you go. Uh, Tiandra Kristen was found guilty of tampering with the human corpse. Um, on Tuesday, she was given a maximum sentence the same as her boyfriend and codependent, Kenny Hewitt, got in November of 2019 uh, in, in the connection death of two-year-old Hazana Anderson. The child was found at the bottom of the Moses Lake on October 31st, 2018, so I was right with the time, wrapped in a plastic bag, tied up with rope and attached to a rock. But no one has ever been convicted of that murder until now. Let's see. She claimed that her daughter had gone missing from her stroller in a park in October, prompting a massive search, going back through CCTV footage and witness statements. Investigators traced the last movements of the mother and the child or what they initially thought was the child. So she had a life-size doll. Uh, they became suspicious when they discovered a doll dressed in the same clothes the missing child had been wearing in a nearby dumpster. Okay, I was confusing that because there was a, a, a white lady who just finally got charged with okay. the same well, thing, but that was from, she, same they charged her. Same article, because I don't want to lose the listeners. Um, the child's tragic last days were eventually pieced together. Kristen had traveled with the daughter from college station to Houston to visit her boyfriend and that the three had stayed at a Houston downtown inn. So they were at a motel. According to the court documents, Kristen told detectives that Hewitt left the hotel with her daughter to go get food. But when they returned 30 minutes later, the little girl was crying and he began hitting her violently with a belt on her arms, legs, and face. I do remember that. Okay. So... I already know your answer, but this is just a question I'll ask. When dating someone, and that's not, and you have a child, would you let your boyfriend watch or babysit your child? Boyfriend Hicks, no. What about you, Rugo? Would you allow a girlfriend watch or babysit your child? You, you, you've I've, gone to the dating been, year, less than a year. I've been less than a year. Yes, than a, less than a year. Um, you know what? I've been on both sides of that, where okay. I've 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 watched you know my my ex girlfriend's children and that that sort of thing. Um, but I can't remember the time frame, so I just think like, you know, if you're a good judge of character, you know, you trust the person. I guess it's you know, okay because okay. I you know I, I've been on both sides. So I but I. Again, I can't say what the time frame was, but nothing happened to to the children. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a responsible happened. adult. Yeah, okay. responsible people, you know. Okay. All right, lovely people. That is my time, and I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. Any last words, Nick? Y'all go ahead and, and, and uh, 
try that 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 vaccine out. Let me know how it worked for y'all. Okay. Any last words to you, Rumble? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Oh, happy Christmas. Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy all, all of them. Because I know I'm missing some of them. Is it Ramadan or is it Ramadan over yet? Well, Ramadan, yeah, we already had that, but you mean uh, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. I got to say Kwanzaa. Yeah, okay, and that's the, from the 26th to the 30th. Yeah, we won't see these folks. We won't see these good folks for a while. The 26th. It's a week after. Yeah, we won't, huh? We're going to have to do an exclusive for Christmas. Try to brighten up someone's day and do what it is that we have to do. I think we can make it happen. Okay. Yes. Or yes. The Chinese, people, like, the Chinese people or the Asian people have become accustomed to the American way. They closing. L L yeah, I'm mad about <laughs> it. If you want some Chinese food before Christmas or a holiday, you won't have to go the day before. Is no. that what you is that what you want on Christmas? You I want, think you, I might I might though. Then, then listen, I we all got what, what happens? I the want the Christmas story, and the Christmas story told me that the Chinese restaurant to be open on Christmas. Why don't you <laughs> do, do us all a favor, right? When we cook our meals, usually people start the day before. Right? If you got a lot of stuff, you may start the day before. Okay. Buy you your Chinese food the day before, then you'll have it on Christmas morning. It don't taste it, the same. It don't taste the same. It don't taste the same. Mm -hmm. It don't taste the same. The next day. Because it was made with love. It don't taste the same. It don't taste the same. You got <laughs> the meals done on Christmas. They close. You on vacation, they on vacation. We Man, Christmas break. Like, what do you mean? That's why my nails look jacked up. What do you mean? You're what are you talking? Up? What are you talking, man? What are you talking? I'm speaking the truth. I don't know about that truth. Listen, the truth I, according to mail. Shout yeah, out to mail. According to the book of mail. Yeah. Like, come on now. Can we be okay? Well, New Year's we're gonna do thirty days for New uh, New Year's. We're gonna have our we're gonna have a New Year too. Christmas story. What? I have been <laughs> I have been programmed. Christmas story showed them at the restaurant. What do you do when you have a bad dinner? When you have a bad dinner, everything's closed. What are we gonna do? Be safe. Got a bad dinner with macaroni that don't taste good. Dressing that is way green. What did we Peanut can, we can learn a lesson? We can learn a lesson from the who's. Okay. What's the and lesson? What did, what, what happened when the Grinch stole their Christmas? They had Christmas they, anyway. They had Christmas anyway. It's with a going, peanut butter inevitable. and jelly sandwich. That's what we go to do. Christmas anyway with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right, so the Who's. I guess I'll do the Who's. And I guess I'll, I'll <laughs> Take guess a lesson from Susie Who. Okay, and on Christmas Eve, I'll have Chinese food and I'll get my taste. <laughs> there we go. All right. I haven't had Chinese food. I ain't playing with y'all no more. I, Find you, embrace you, most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people. Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking like, ah, this. Oh, man. <laughs>